Hi, I'm Tina Thrussell, co-founder of Best You Can Be and Messenger of the Heart, the Way of the Heart. I am your host for today's show, Living from the Heart, and my guest today is Jason Steele. I first met Jason, oh golly, more than a decade ago. He had uh, registered to attend one of the weekend intensives that Neil and I were hosting that was a focus on people finding their purpose. And though Jason was coming and looking for clarity, one thing that was very clear to me was he was a man who loved life. He has a zeal and a passion for life. And that passion took a while to narrow into a specific focus. And once he did, it took him down a really interesting path of acting and writing, and now having his own production and filming company. It's been an exciting and interesting journey with lots happening along the way. And before I bring Jason on to have some actual discussion with him about his journey, I invite you to have a look at the little crawler at the bottom of the screen. It invites you to receive a complimentary subscription to Heart and Mind Matters. Every other Tuesday morning, we send out an inspirational article, a motivational quote, a YouTube video of the week, and it's complimentary for you at B-E-S-T, the letter U, C-A-N, no, best you can be, B dot C-A, there we go. <laughs> anyway, without further ado and babble, I would like to bring on to the show none other than Jason Steele. There he is. Good morning, Jason. Good morning. Uh, it's a delight to have you here on the show. I'm just going to take a little peek here at there. We can get rid of that. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, so that, oh gosh, that intensive so many years ago, um, the Sage Within, I think we were calling it at the time was was a, a, a journey to find some purpose and like i said i obviously you came because you were doing a little bit of looking but but like i said what grabbed me is that your guy that saw life as a bull and you were going to grab it by the horns and ride it for all it's worth <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh for sure i think uh, i think the thing that i remember most on that particular intensive was uh, how i uh, we had the karaoke or whatever you called that night. I'm sure you remember that. I uh, do remember that, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, I remember Neil saying, hey, uh, so when you come out to this thing, uh, you need to sing a song at some point. And I said, oh, okay. But he said, it has to be difficult. You, you, you know, if, if, it's, if, if you're really scared to get up there, then, you know, just happy birthday or something is fine. But if you, if you feel confident with that, you know, sing something challenging. If that feels you're confident, then maybe dance or something. You know, do whatever it takes. And so I kept trying to figure out how to make it scary. And I think I remember I, I had been learning guitar. So, and I was terrible at guitar, but I was just starting to learn. And I was uh, had written a song, which was terrible. But, you know, um, and, uh, and I was trying to figure out, okay, well, if I get up there and I do those, is that scary enough, my own work? And that wasn't scary enough. And so by the end of it, I ended up doing a song and dance where I stripped throughout it and was naked by the end of it. So, you know, uh, and I figured I have to stay on, 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 on in front of everybody until I finished the last word of the song. And uh, that, that, that was as close to scary as I guess I could get. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's really interesting because we had some very very modest people from cultures where oh my gosh seeing yeah. an empty body is just like unbelievable but i remember the comments being that it was just so natural and so right and it wasn't at all offensive and it was just a true revealing of your own nature and your willingness to to go the distance and like i said ride that bull we call life for a great ride. It was really amazing. Well, thank you. It was a challenge. So, <laughs> and I appreciated being offered the challenge too. So that was, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> That's cool. So, so I, I, it may or may not have had anything to do with it, but did that opportunity to be on stage and push yourself like 
to sing your, a song you wrote and play a guitar that you're only learning to play and end up naked. <laughs> Did all of that sort of set you on the path to, yeah, I do want to do this acting thing? Uh, I think it was definitely part of my path um, in that um, it reminded me that uh, that I'm not really afraid of very much when it comes to being in front of people and performing. So. Um, whereas a lot of people get a little bit nervous and for me, I don't really get that nervous anymore. I'm more just dive in and, and whatever happens, happens. Even if something is, goes wrong, it's probably not going to work out that bad. So, um, and, and it may turn out great. So you just never know. That, that to me is a spiritual attitude. And I don't know if you consider yourself a spiritual person or not, but that I'm, thing- I'm, I'm up and down on that spectrum these days. Uh, some days I feel more like maybe I'm an atheist. Other times I think, but you know what? A lot of things just happen to line up in the universe. So, you know, if all these things keep lining up and things happen without, um, without an obvious cause, then maybe there is something going on. I don't know what, but maybe there's something going on. <laughs> I'm yeah. Cool with it, I guess. Well, and that's cool to think that there is a greater force that can have an influence and and can sort of nudge things in the right direction. I mean, everybody experiences synchronicity, right? What some people call coincidences, but for those who are a little bit more spiritual, they saw, they'll say, no, it's synchronicity. It's the universe kind of arranging for things to happen. And I, I find that people who do have a spiritual leaning find it easier to believe that, well, whatever happens really happens for the best. There is some reason that it turned out this way. And though it might not be what I originally envisioned, it has its purpose and something good comes of it in the end. Yeah, yeah I and agree. Yeah, yeah, you just illustrated that you actually have that uh, attitude or perspective, I guess, is the way to look at it. Yeah, yeah I think uh, that's that's kind of the key. Is is whatever, however it works out. Quite often, I uh, quite often I'll think, okay, I really want to make this happen this way. This is my goals, and somewhere along the way, some opportunity will pop up, and I'll I'll see may or may not see that it's related to what I'm working on, and uh, and I'll just head in that direction. And eventually it'll come back and I'll realize, oh, that's working as a way easier path to what I was trying to do. And uh, I actually have an, an example of that that's kind of going right now in my life um, with a web series that I just got funded by TELUS StoryHive, um, where I pitched seven times to them to do different projects, um, music videos, short films, um, a web series. Um, and so then recently uh, another opportunity to pitch a web series came up and I thought, okay, well, what, what's actually been working in my life? What direction has everything kind of been leaning? And uh, in my day job, I work with people with disabilities and throughout the day, um, and I, as a recreation staff type of person, so I, I do a lot of theater and writing and things like that with them. and. Um, a lot of the stories that have been coming up have been just the greatest stories. Um, and I kept thinking, oh, I wish I had the time to be able to turn all of these into films. And uh, and I had just done a short film with a gentleman from this spring that was a, uh, or last spring, that was a, a Western, just a two minute Western. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be great to be able to make more of these just like that, but I just don't have the time um, you know, unless I'm getting paid and then I can start to take, you know, set other things aside. But right now, money's been tight. So I said, uh, well, maybe when this web series came up, instead of pitching whatever other projects I might have in mind, why don't I pitch a project that involves people with disabilities since it seems I keep getting things going in that direction. Um, and there's so many cool things happening in that direction. So the series I pitched is, is that every episode is a short film that uh, is written by or includes people with disabilities. Um, and when I pitched that, I actually was successful. Um, 
and I think it's because I, I took a look and I said, you know, all of my success in all the different directions, um, because I've had other people come to me and say, hey, I want to make this film. And the people that are coming to me are people with disabilities that are coming to me with, with, with good ideas. Uh, it seems like in my day-to-day -day life and the rest of my life, if somebody comes to me with an idea, I think, oh, I don't know about that one. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but somehow these ideas that come from this, this uh, unexpected direction seem to be better um, and or more enticing to me anyway. So uh, I thought, well, why don't we go the direction the universe seems to be sending me anyways? And it worked. I've got a grant now to make a, a short film that's it's going to be another Western. And uh, I've got a young gentleman on uh, uh, to kind of, uh, he, you know what, I'm, I'm giving him an associate producer credit because he's doing so much for it. Um, his name is Abram and he's, uh, he messages me constantly with, hey, here's a wanted poster that uh, we can do as our as our poster. Here's some uh, holsters and different things. Like he's sending me all these things and he's so like excited uh, mm -hmm. that he's just, uh, he's, he's become a driving force behind the project. So, so we're moving forward with a Western. So pretty exciting. That's so awesome, and and again, it this is again it says to me. I don't know how you can think you're an atheist when you have such <laughs> a view, right? It's like, well, we could swim upstream, or we could just turn our boat and go with the flow that the universe is providing, and that's what you're doing. And look at what's coming forward. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Now, Einstein said we can either choose to believe that the world is a friendly place or not. And when we believe that it's a friendly place and the universe has got our back and things will happen for our highest good and just surrender to that, ah, beautiful stuff happens. And there it is. I remember seeing your Facebook post um, when you announced this uh, project of working with people, persons with disabilities. I was very excited by that because here is your, your passion is acting, performing, um, bringing stories to the screen in some way or another, whether it's to write those stories or film those stories, act in those stories. And and it's it's come to light in a way that you actually are earning an income, not the way most people would automatically think of. Like right. being paid as an actor isn't a way to survive, don't go there is what most people told us when we were kids, right? Yeah. And yet here you are working with persons with disabilities, you're getting that whole recreation aspect, you're having this opportunity to, to create these films. It's just amazing to me. It's, it's a classic passion test example. When you're clear about what your passion is and you focus on it, miracles happen. Very true. Yeah, the first, uh, uh, the first longer, Film, I, I, I'm going to call it a feature film, is about 60 minutes long that I did um, and was paid throughout the process was because it was when I was uh, working, first started at the job that I'm working at now, and uh, I, I was leading just a, a acting class there, and every week on Tuesdays we would have, have this acting class, and uh, I said, well, what do you guys want to do next? You know, we just finished doing a little stage thing um and uh, i said do you want to make a uh, like a little movie or something and i was just thinking it would be just a little short film and uh but then everybody said yes and uh, i asked what theme they wanted and uh, superheroes was the overwhelming choice and so we ended up over a period of <clears throat> almost a year um brainstorming ideas for this superhero movie uh, kind of working out a bit of an outline. And then every Tuesday we would film um, a couple scenes for this this movie. And by the end of the year, we had a one hour superhero movie. Um, and throughout that whole time, I was being paid to facilitate that, that theater slash film class. Um, and I mean, I wasn't being paid with, you know, union wages are for a director, producer, actor, whatever. But I mean, I was getting paid, um, whereas other people have to go to film school to do uh, what I would consider a student project like that and, uh, and pay 
to be in class and I was being paid to fumble through every week and figure out how we were going to do this special effect for this superhero skill or um, different things kind of on the fly. And it was really cool. So brilliant and so creative. I, I, I love that aspect. I think creativity brings juice into our lives. And creativity can come in a lot of different ways. Like some people say, oh, I'm not creative, I can't paint or I can't draw. But gosh, creativity goes way beyond that. You're problem solving. Like how do you how do you make this special effect happen? That's creativity. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've very much learned to be very creative on the fly. And I think that's one of the, the key skills that I'm um, that I bring to the table is that last minute, um, how do I solve it? Um, the, another example of that was last year we did a, a web series called The Bin, which was a horror thriller um, web series. And even just coming up with it, um, I, I kind of looked at my summer and I said, I don't know what I'm going to, I really want to make a feature film this summer, but I, I haven't got it planned. Um, and I knew that other people had me booked to help with different short films and things throughout the rest of the weekends of the summer. So I thought, when am I going to do this? But there was a weekend four days away that I still had open. Nobody had asked me for anything. So I said, well, can I make a feature film in a weekend? Um, wow. and, uh, and so what would I need to do? Instead of asking, can I, I just said, how do I make a feature film in a weekend? What do I need? And I just said, OK, I need, a, I need to make a script that everybody can improvise because no one will have time to learn lines. Um, and it needs to be contained one location. And uh, so I came up with this concept of a group of people captive in a grain bin, um, being captive by a, some sort of a psychopath or something. And, uh, and then we'll just go from there. And um, it was cool because over that four days from the Tuesday when I first had the idea, I want to make something this weekend, um, I wrote an outline. Um, which was basically each scene that I would need in order to create a, a good story arc uh, and a good character arc. Um, I cast it uh, with a bunch of people who I knew would be strong um, improvisers um, and also strong actors for dramatic type of thing. I found a crew and, um, and equipment and all the props and stuff. Um, and when we got to set, I hadn't, I hadn't slept all the night before because I had been basically spent all day getting props and costumes on the Saturday. It ended up being a one day shoot for that portion of it. Um, and then a couple of other days later on, um, adding to the concept. But we, uh, when I arrived, I hadn't slept for a, a day already. <laughs> I get there at 7 a.m. with no sleep. Um, realized we didn't have all the cameras that I thought we were gonna have and my concept all night long as I was finishing my outline was that it would be a uh, security cameras inside of this bin that would capture from all directions. And so I could just, we just set them all running and hit record. And then it would be found footage in security cameras. And when we got there, we realized one of our cameras, we, we didn't have the extra cameras that we wanted. Um, and um, so I'd been trying to obtain a, a fourth camera, didn't get it. So I thought we'd have three cameras. Found out that we actually didn't have three, we only had two, and of those two, one wasn't very good in low light. So I really only had one camera that was gonna be good inside of the grain bin. And so just last minute changed from being this, you know, four cameras set in stone and just capturing a wide image to we're gonna have one cameraman doing, um, uh, just following the action and hope it works. And luckily my, uh, my director of photography, Ruben Cheddar, uh, is actually a documentary filmmaker. Mm -hmm. And so he's used to really quickly getting that camera running and grabbing whatever's the most important thing to grab in that shot. And uh, so he nailed that, that whole uh, day of, of shooting. Um, and our actors were fabulous. We, most things we didn't want to take and so I learned a lot of things just on the fly. Um, and I'm very good at uh, really quickly problem solving something. Something that might look like, oh, this is going to end the, the shoot. You just change it. I even had um, uh, 
it was funny that in the couple days before I'd started to try to find a bunch of extras as firefighters uh, to come and, uh, and rescue workers to come and, and rescue the, the, the cast at the end of the, the movie, have that be the final scene where um, the, the, everybody comes to save them. And so I had, I think I had about 20 people on deck, several of them actually firefighters with gear ready, prepared to come. Uh -huh. um, but I didn't give them um, directions or a location because I, I was so busy trying to get this casting done. And so on the day in between takes, I was, I realized these people don't know where to go. So early <laughs> afternoon on Sunday, I'm messaging and saying at six o'clock, meet here, this is the address and so on. But by early afternoon on Sunday, all those people had kind of made different plans and decided to do family stuff or do whatever they were doing. And by the end of the day, um, and I had another actress who was supposed to be a reporter um, showing up at the same time as that group as well to kind of um, help tie it up. Well, she ended up sick and not a single one of those about 20 other extras showed up not a single one because i was so late getting those that confirmation one. and so as we got closer and closer to evening and it was apparent that we weren't going to have all of these other people um we changed the ending of the the film and we changed on the fly and i love the ending now um it doesn't have the uh the, the all the specialness or or the, the what what's the word i'm looking for uh production value that having a whole bunch of people show up would have had um yeah. but it actually is um, kind of a fun and intense ending anyway so it, it, it worked great and we just changed it on the fly because we didn't have any of the people we planned to have for that and it worked um so that's amazing. I, I mean, the, the fact that you only conceived of the idea on Tuesday and by Sunday you actually had a film. Yeah. And, and yeah, <laughs> with all of those circumstances and conditions, most people always say it's a miracle that you managed to create a film. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, after we did the Sunday shoot, we did film a few other days of filming to lead up to the, the events that would lead up to um, the cap that's being in the bin, but um, so it, it ended up being more than a one-day shoot. It was more uh, like a, about five days, I think, in the end. Um, but it worked well because the, uh, the the one day was the, the day that we had a whole bunch of cast and crew and everybody. The rest of the days, uh, I was able to film uh, myself uh, with with just a couple of other actors and uh, um, at different locations, and it actually came out really good. So. So that's, I'll, I'll give that pitch, you know, go, uh, actually, uh, yeah, if you go to my website, the um, uh, porcupinefilmproductions.com, uh, that actually has my, um, uh, a bunch of different films that we've worked on, music videos, and it also has links to all the episodes of the uh, film, which we actually just submitted this week for, to potentially be considered for Anthea Awards. So uh, that's on for the Picture Industry Association. Did I spell that right? Porcupine Productions? Porcupine, porcupine Film Productions. Oh, well, okay. Film. Yeah, Porcupine yeah. Film Productions Film Productions .com. Let's try that again. Yeah. Uh, Yay. Yes, that's the one. So yeah, um, that's got uh, a couple of music videos, three music videos that uh, I did uh, in the last few months, as well as that uh, bin. And uh, I think it also has that short little um, uh, Western, that two minute Western that I mentioned, that's on there as well. Um, you have to dig around because I haven't totally got the website set up really well yet. I've been fumbling through web design in between um, pre-production on my next project, but, um, but there it is, so. Um, yeah. that, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, for people to have a taste of what's there, and what uh, so so much. There's really so much in just a little over a decade. This has all come to pass, right? Yeah. Because prior to that, <laughs> that wonderful experience of singing on stage in that little garage on a ranch out in the country. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> there was there were there were no acting, there was no screenwriting, there no, no film production, none of that, right? And so all of this has evolved in such a short time, and that's yeah. really impressive. Yeah, it truly has. I uh, I think at that time I would still have been uh, I was dispatching for the RCMP. Uh, which is a very non-creative job. It's very black and white. This is, you know, if you're dealing with an armed robbery, step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, right? Um, and so uh, there's not a lot of, there's a little bit of gray area, you know, for this situation is a little different than this situation, but mostly you follow the, the, uh, the plan for how to handle something so it can be handled quick and efficient. Um, um, but... I very much needed that creative outlet, and uh, I began to realize that. And so, ten years ago, I decided I needed to move into uh, creative realm, and uh, realized that uh, about twenty-five. Gosh, how long ago was that? Would have been about nineteen years old. The first time I went on stage, and I did a couple of plays with Central Alberta Theatre, and I felt so on stage then, or so on stage, so comfortable on stage. Um, and so I remembered that when I was trying to think of uh, where I wanted to transition my, my, my path, my career path. And um, I thought, you know, so I want to get back into acting. And so I, I dove into acting and very quickly recognized that I also wanted to get into writing and directing. And I never thought I'd want to produce because I always thought producing, oh, that sounds like a lot of uh, headaches and you know, trying to find people, trying to find different things. Mm -hmm. But I've actually recently started to find that I am actually doing a lot more producing than anything because I have friends that call me and say, hey, I need an actor for this or I need a camera person for this or I need this costume. And I'm often the person who has access to those people and things. And so I'm, I'm ending up like in a sort of producer type of role which is kind of the, has their hands in everything um, to be able to help them with their projects as well as do my own. So it's all it's all, it's all coming together in this weird package that I have become over the years. <laughs> it really is interesting. It's this this organic evolution, right? It just happened and unfolded as things appeared, but it just started with that decision. And ultimately, that's what it is. It's a decision, right? I'm going to leave this black and white, non-creative world and start heading into this creative path of on stage, and pff, then just surrender and see what happens. And wow, look what happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so, so cool. So um, I see lots of potential messages for our viewers in the discussion that we've been having in terms of, of uh, believing in yourself, of trusting that whatever unfolds, like you said, it, it you just got on stage and whatever is going to happen happens, not getting uptight about no attachment to the actual outcome. I mean, the fact that you were willing to change the ending of your movie on a spur of the moment. Oh, well, nobody showed up. Let's come up with a new ending yeah. instead of freaking out and going, oh, no, it's ruined, right? Which so many people would do. Um, so there are, there are a lot of lessons in here. What, what are the life lessons that you see coming forward that you'd like to share with our viewers or you listeners? A lot of nails on the head with how I think um, about life and, and so on. Um, I find that um, not being attached to a particular outcome or a particular result is um, so freeing. And you'd be surprised how often when you detach from what's uh, having a specific expectation that you actually end up with a better result than you could have imagined. Um, I see that very often. Um, and knowing that things are actually going to work out okay. Um, even if you don't have everything lined up, you think, you think, you look, and you think, I, I, oh, I really need to have, I'm, I'm missing this one little piece. And just when I've got that one little piece, then I'll be able to leap into whatever it is. So if you're thinking of getting into writing and you're, you're thinking, oh, but I, I need to take another class or 
uh, I want to open a business, but I, I think I'm, you know, I just need to learn a little more about web design before I open a business or things like that. Um, you kind of at some point just need to leave <clears throat> and say, uh, you know, it's time. Um, I actually, I can, I can really point to a time very much like that. And I think that that might be a good reminder for people. Um, I had gone to a, a men's retreat and it, it was wonderful and all kinds of, it was great. And I remember one of the key things they did in the men's retreats was uh, they, uh, they used movie trailers to kind of give us the sense of what the next segment of the, the retreat would be to kind of um, get us into the right frame of mind. And so um, I remember I'd done the one men's retreat, it was great. And I said, yeah, I'm going to sign up for the next one. So signed up for the next one, which ended up being in Washington. And so we carpooled down to uh, Seattle, at, uh, or just outside of Seattle. And first day of the retreat, it's a beautiful retreat center, trees and a creek. And I could see from this huge log building, um, sitting in the, the room, I could see this creek running out the back window. And I was already yes, this is going to help me on my life path. I'm going to have all these new skills and new things come from this. And I sat down um, because I'd been to so many different retreats and growth and, and, and learned so much about myself and, and uh, my journey and um, um, really become much more confident at this time. And I sat down ready to learn more confidence and learn more skills. And they started to play the first trailer. And immediately I looked and I said, what am I doing here? I, I've been through this before. I've done these courses before. I've been through all of this. And I looked out at the creek going by and I said, I would much rather be out in the creek right now doing life, being in life and doing all the things that I'm learning how not to be scared to do. Why am I not just doing it? And so, Effectively, that was actually one of the last personal development courses that I took. Um, I've taken a couple others, um, but more um, kind of to, uh, because maybe I knew the facilitator and wanted to say, hey, let's see what's, what's working and what isn't working in your course and, uh, to kind of help beta testers, things like that. Um, but I just decided to dive into life and start doing instead of learning how to do and not be afraid to just take the next step and um, so yes you know take all the courses learn all those things and become the best person that you can be um, and of course you know um, Tina and Neil are amazing so do 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 take the, anything that uh, comes your way uh, from these amazing people um, and at one point when you decide hey you know what I'm almost there just leap in just leap in and start to do whatever it is that you're almost ready to do because, uh, and just trust it'll work. Um, and it may not work perfectly. It may go, you may fall flat on your face, but that's part of it too, is just having the confidence to fall flat on your face over and over again until it works, to, to, to go headlong into a wall and then get back up and do it again until it works. Um, because it's never gonna work perfectly, but, don't be afraid to leave. No, mm. My final piece. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful closing advice. And it, 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 that just took me back like, whoa, two decades ago almost to um, the Beyond Fear course that Neil and I created and facilitated. And I remember there was this big section about the when then game. We play this game with ourselves. Well, when this is in place, then I'll do that. When this is in place, then I'll do that. And it keeps us from actually taking the leap, as you say, it keeps us from moving forward and just doing what we want to do. So a lot of people get caught up in the whole analysis paralysis of their life and are thinking about living rather than really living. And for me, Jason Steele epitomizes really living. So I applaud you for following your heart, living from your heart, following your passion. And thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. We're a little bit over time, so I guess it's time to say ciao for now. And I'll invite everyone to tune in. And next week, I'll be here 
same time, same station with Adele Podorek, a really interesting story coach. So uh, maybe there'll be a connection for you too. Hmm, who knows? <laughs> anyway, uh, again, thank you so much, Jason. Thank you for your, uh, your sharing, your openness and your wisdom. Thank you very much, Tina. It was wonderful to be invited on the show and uh, I look forward to more collaboration with you. Excellent. Ciao for now, folks. <laughs>